So I want to welcome, uh, to open our show, uh, Jan Hupfeldt, who's the VP of Global Marketing and Communications at Lenovo Mobile Business Group and Motorola Mobility. Please welcome Jan. Thank you. Good morning. It's actually something um, somebody needs to explain here at some stage, why in the US the room stall is so cold. Um, <laughs> was keep shivering. Um, you you must be very hot blood um, people. I, I certainly I certainly have have difficulties with those cold temperatures. Hey, I'm really happy to be here um, uh, talking to you, and uh, and I love programmatic, but I'm not going to talk a lot about programmatic today. I want to do a little bit of storytelling. Um, maybe just uh, just uh, up front. Um, I have an unusual background. I have a PhD in chemistry, then worked 10 uh, years in Procter and Gamble, of which some time in research and development, and then 10 years in IT. And uh, the last five years of, of those in Lenovo last one and a half on Motorola. And I have to say this, these last one and a half years have, have really been uh, fantastic. And, and I want to, um, can I have the slides, Mark? I think he's working on them. We'll get them set up. Good. Time. So, I might have pressed the wrong button. That's nice, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want, I want to leave you with three takeaways today. Uh, takeaway number one, it's all about branding and distinctive branding, but it is about building a brand. And right, you know, we, we've been, um, in, in terms of Motorola, we've been out of the market for, for a while. Thank you. Um, no, doesn't it work? Yeah. Um, the second, it's about storytelling. And storytelling, because we're all humans, we like myth, we like uh, stories, that's, uh, that has always been this way. It has been this way for the last thousand or, or, or a couple of thousand years. And, and then when it comes to media, um, I'm pushing very hard in my organization to focus on reach rather than frequency. And ultimately, you know what? When I think of my job as a, as a, in my role as a CMO, but in the, in the end of, of the role of the marketeer, for me, a marketeer is a growth strategist. What does it actually mean? A growth strategist for me is is the person who who proposes strategies for growth to the business. And strategies is a set of integrated choices, what you do and not do, to achieve an objective. Now, when it comes to marketing, we make choices in terms of which customer or consumer we are going after, what product to use, what pricing um, is the right one. And then, obviously, also, how do we reach that consumer with what kind of media uh, choices. But there are also much bigger brand choices to make, and, and, and that, uh, that is actually part of what I want to convey today and then we get into media a little later. If you look into the smartphone industry and you think of Motorola, Motorola has been a, a big player with a razor in, in the heydays more than 10 years ago. And then the smartphone um, obviously came out in, in June 07, Apple launched its phone, and, and Motorola had difficulties catching up, like many other players at the time. Um, and then it was bought by Google in 2013 for 16 billion. Only two years later, Google sold it to Lenovo um, for 3 billion. At that time, a much smaller company. And for Lenovo, for Lenovo, that was a very good choice to make because Lenovo was in the smartphone play. In fact, um, Lenovo had smartphones at that time, but was, was basically serving 55% of the population, and most of that in the emerging markets. China, of course, home market, and then various uh, other Asian um, and, and African markets. Um, but what Lenovo was missing was a brand in the mature markets, and Motorola was clearly delivering on that. So then the strategic choice Lenovo made um, was to actually use both brands, the Lenovo Vibe brand, which was their premium smartphone brand, and Motorola on the other side. And, and ultimately, they came to the decision in February 2016 to actually abandon Motorola as a brand and, and go for Lenovo Vibe and Lenovo Moto. 
And you see there were a couple of other um, brands I'm, I'm not going to touch on, but that was their strategy. Until um, the actual leadership in the mobile business group a little would change, and the respective um, um, president of the business group um, put me into the role of the chief marketing officer. And, and what we looked at um, was actually this uh, as one of the key data points in what do we want to do in terms of our mobile business group strategy. This here is a consumer decision journey for the US in smartphones. So there is an initial consideration set then the people browse and ultimately purchase, and then you have a loyalty loop underneath. Now, 50% of the category is delivered through this initial consideration set. And at that initial consideration set, people have one and a half brands in mind, only one and a half brands. So it's a very tight spot. If you're not in this initial consideration set, you can still enter during the browsing but that, there's only one brand added through that process, and it makes up only 50% of category. Now, that doesn't give 100% yet, because there is that loyalty loop. There are people who never show up in the market. They just buy the brands they always bought. And, and as you can guess, a lot of Apple users are, are among those. So when we looked into this, and we looked into what do we actually have as our Lenovo vibe, Lenovo motto as a portfolio, we realized that we actually have a far too complex um, setup to actually win in this highly competitive business. And, and you know, the more brands you have, the more your advertising and marketing dollars need to be divided over many brands. It is, it is not an easy play. We, we actually, at that point of time, had 35 plus products um, which, which ultimately delivered uh, an average uh, maybe a million units uh, each, which is actually below the actual threshold of making, uh, making money. So what we then did, um, we, we looked into, so what do we have in our portfolio? And Motorola stuck out to me. The Razer in the heyday sold 100 million units the, the third generation, 100 million units, one phone alone. That would earn you today um, a third, a very solid third place um, in, in the global smartphone, smartphone world. And, and some very iconic advertising, which actually incidentally was done by Ogilvy, which is also our agency today. Um, and then it has a very rich history. It was when the first when we put our first uh, foot on the moon, it was actually Motorola's radio technology which uh, sent back the signals uh, to Earth. And in 1973, it was a Motorola engineer who did the first smartphone, well, not smartphone, the first mobile phone call, very far away from a smartphone at that point of yeah. time, uh, first mobile phone call um, calling um, his uh, Dell, uh, no, uh, his um, Bell technology, um, uh, opponent with this, this humongous uh, piece of phone. It was, it was certainly a bit of a uh, bodybuilding at that time. Um, and then uh, when you look into the strong brand heritage, so we, we actually benefit from an aided brand awareness, which is, which is very, very high. I mean, you can see in Latin America about 90%, but even in China, we are close to 70%. So this is, this is, a, great, this is a great base to actually work from, right? So we decided we go all in on, um, <coughs> it's not working very well. Sorry about that. Is the battery giving up on me? If you can go to the next slide. because you're working from an Apple computer. <laughs> Actually, it cannot work. It's working from a Windows computer. <laughs> That's even worse. How are we doing? Moment of relaxation.
So, so it has it has a rich history, but it also actually had a sound mnemonic which they used in the heydays, and that was Hello Moto. And I thought we just play you that sound because we actually revived that. So let's uh, let's play the sound. You know, as usual, it worked perfectly. Right? You have to practice; it works perfectly. Otherwise, I see you. Skip the hello motor. Maybe you remember. You play it. You play it at the end. I think. I think you might have just exit for whatever reason. It seems to be corrupt now. So, in a nutshell, we looked into what we actually have in terms of assets, and it was a very clear call. We had to bring back Motorola. Then, only in February 2016, they. Um, the, the, the previous lead team on the mobile business group had announced that uh, we would actually abandon Motorola. We decided to bring Motorola back and to actually double down on this American icon because it, it's by far the strongest asset which we have. And there are some very distinctive um, brand assets, of course. There's the backlink, which we are going to put and have uh, put front and center everywhere. The Hello Moto, which is this beautiful sound mnemonic. Um, from the heydays, and a lot of people remember we are using quite a lot. And look, if uh, if if we, together with the other lead team, uh, would find a way of uh, bringing taste to uh, Motorola, we would uh, we would certainly do that too. We are trying to appeal certainly to all senses. Now, um, what did we do? We looked into what does competition do, and at that time. Um, it, uh, it struck us that competition was very much in this less and more. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, if you look at what, uh, what Apple and Samsung are doing, it is, it is very product focused. Um, it is very controlled, understated. And, and we decided we just want to go the opposite. Where they zig, we want, zag, want to zag. And we looked into a couple of um, uh, st stimulating um, examples from other industries, the fashion industry. Kenzo, uh, Louis Vuitton, and, um, and, and certainly went to a overall brand personality which is lively, unexpected, and bold, and you will see this in our executions. He started playing with the battling, uh, modernized it, used it as a, as a window, and it's actually interesting because on the Lenovo container side, we did a, we did a rather similar exercise. Now let's... Uh, The next slide. Um, then we, we have uh, worked on the visual identity in, in terms of the Moto world. Uh, you can see that we are taking taking up design elements, um, and and here you have uh, a good overview of, of some of the visual identity clues and some of our key protagonists, which you will see in our our TV coverage. Packaging we went instead of. You know the boring white. We went into into very colorful, bold um, packaging, and, and this is our lineup. I told you yes earlier that we had not so long ago 35 plus products. Now we actually just have five franchises: the Moto Z, X, G, E, and C. So there's a very tight lineup, um, which uh, uh, has has huge consequences on on uh, how the PNL is structured, uh, and in terms of the the overheads, which we have much reduced. And our our number one uh, flagship phone is actually a, is the Moto Z, and it is an unusual phone. And, and I, of course, have one here, as, as have my colleagues. And I, if you haven't seen it, it is really an unusual and, un, and, and wonderful um, piece of, of, the, of the device, because it breaks the limitations of the smartphone industry. 
How? Because when you when you have a smartphone, it is limited in its in its in its size, and um, and you cannot uh, add a super speaker to it. Um, otherwise, the phone gets too big. Here, you just snap on a speaker, or you snap on a projector, or a 360 camera, um, an extra battery. So there's there's a lot which you can we can offer, um, and and I'm happy to to show you a few examples. We also work on the visual identity. And then we started with a Challenger uh, campaign, and, and unfortunately, because of the time, I cannot read you through this. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, this is a this is a um, beautiful piece of advertising which we did together with Ogilvy, and we created an open letter, brought it out in the New York Times and Wall Street Journal um, in September last year, and that was the start of a of a new um, a Challenger campaign. You can go to the next slide. And, and I will show you the video which we which we developed, and then I will talk about the media. Is it working? Okay. No, it's. Uh, I think it is called the skip the sevens or. So we invited to actually. Uh, consumers to skip the seventh generation of Apple and Samsung at that time, um, and uh, went went out with a very very aggressive piece of advertising. Sorry for the trouble. Just throwing out of all of timing tools here. Sorry. I swear I was working earlier. <coughs> the new thing I have here is strong. Hello, Moto. <laughs> so forget my comment earlier, it was actually a PC which died and the Apple is saving us. <laughs> Not a good headline. 
Yes. So let's look at the TVC with this uh, of our challenger company. Smartphone. Big. Game. Changing. OMG. Now, fast forward to today. Nothing has really changed. The camera got a little better. The head... So the orderly team, come on, jump in, give us, give us a voiceover. <laughs> I just show you a few of our our knots. So I, I told you that there are connectors on our Moto Z phone, right? Um, if you're if you're keen on, on listening to music or if you for business, if you want to call somebody in and use it as a spider phone, you just snap on the speaker. Remember the speaker. Smartphones, big game changing. And the rest is oh, to be covered in distinctive in its brand personality, a little bit on the quirky side, and you will, you will see a, another TVC later on, which is a, a sequel to what you've just seen there. And But now let's talk a little bit about media, because that's why we are here. So we launched, we launched that phone um, in the first announcement in, in June, and then the actual US launch was, was in July. And this is Google search volume. And we started off with a highly focused digital campaign. Now, why did we do this in the US with a highly focused digital campaign? Because we were only at one carrier, and that was Verizon. Now, Verizon has about 35% of the market, and it is uh, certainly a good carrier to be with. But we were you know, debating internally, should we go out with expensive TV and traditional media, or should we rather be very focused? And we said, look, we go very focused, after Android users within the Verizon account. And that is best done by our digital. Um, and we actually hit, in the first six weeks of our campaign, we hit our consumer target between five and 10 times. So at a very high frequency. And the bottom line of that effort was that um, all our metrics were agreed. It actually worked really well. Um, and we can, uh, well, I get to get to that in a second. Um, it actually worked so well um, on, specifically on Facebook, we actually had um, in, an uplift in, in sales volume directly attributed to our Facebook activities. Um, and then also our ad recall within uh, Facebook was, was extremely, uh, extremely good and extremely promising. It went so well that actually Facebook used our, our business case in their earnings announcement in the fall last year. But the bigger question was, how do we actually drive and relaunch this Motorola brand in the US? And did this digital approach work? And it did, it did not deliver as much as we wanted, because the respective unaided brand awareness did not lift up as much as we wanted. And our, our sellout um, did not lift as much um, as, we, as we had desired. Then we came out with our open letter. 
the skip the seventh, where we invite the consumers to actually skip the seventh generation of the big two. Um, and shortly after, we followed up with the TDC that you had just seen. And, and the Google search volume, when you look at this initial period, the launch, which then trailed down, um, you can see that we more than doubled our Google search volume, our sellout actually more than quadrupled during the November and February period. So, um, what, what actually happened? What actually happened here? So, for me, first message, TV advertising is, is far from being dead, right? In, in this case, it was TV advertising which actually drove the very strong sellout during the November and February period. It is, it, the correlation is very clear to us. Um, of course, it was always going to be a media mix, so it was not TV only, but it was a mix between TV, digital, social media. Um, and, and digital had worked within what it could do. But if you are a brand which is not top of mind, and you need to be relaunching your brand for the first time, Traditional media have a very strong st um, role to play, and and storytelling is needed. And storytelling is still, from my point of view, at least in our case, TV was a better tool of doing this, um, including the maybe print ad which we which we aired in the beginning or mid September, um, than the digital only. And I think there are a number of dynamics here. So if you are a consumer and you're on your mobile phone and we all are on our mobile phone far too often and far too long, um, and you get an ad served, if that brand doesn't tell you anything, if that doesn't resonate somewhere, it doesn't have an anchor point, you, you just skip over it. TV does catch your attention, and the ad avoidance is getting higher and higher on TV, but it is still a different uh, magnitude than um, than in the digital space. Now, I would argue, ar also argue that digital and especially engagement media, they are fantastic media um, for, for, certain, um, for certain cases. But let's think about it. You know, we've been in Lenovo very focused over the last five years on driving engagement marketing. And that is also what the PC part of the house is still doing um, very aggressively, is driving engagement marketing. But who is engaging with your content? You will very likely be over proportionally talking to those people who know you already, who are already users, who know your brand and are familiar with your brand um, and are using your brand. If you want, if you are out there to actually drive penetration, um, engagement marketing might not be the best tool to do this. So. Ultimately, what I'm saying here is horses for courses. It has to, your media choices cannot be, well, you know, modern ways, it's all digital social, or it's only traditional media. But what I'm saying is, you have to start with what is your business challenge? And from your business challenge, you translate this into what is your marketing and go-to-market and media strategy. And this is a very compelling business case that, in fact, um, TV is, is not bad, and that um, digital and traditional media have to complement each other. Let's look at the sequel um, from the TVC, which we've seen earlier. The radio on the moon. Ah, that well, is not the sequel. This, this is just a recap of the last year of what we actually did um, on the brand. Hello, Moto. And returned with a challenge for the industry and the big guys. So we called out the competition with Skip the Sevens. And the world took notice. We're not afraid to be different, bold, and challenge the status quo. This is only the beginning of what's to come for Motorola. Goodbye, same old smartphone. Hello, Moto. 
So what you saw in the video is a little bit of a recap of the, of the past year. Um, and you, you've seen that um, we, we won quite a number of awards within the PR, but also general advertising. And probably the award I'm most proud of is actually the Brand Transformation Award. We not only were awarded for that brand branding and brand transformation within the tech industry, but across all industries. Um, and, uh, and then um, in, thanks to our great partners, Ogilvy and, and Weber Tantric on the PR side, we, we really uh, uh, were, were covered in, in, uh, in great awards. Now, um, I, um, I would like to just show you one last uh, TDC and, and then wrap up and, and uh, maybe we have two, two three old, uh, questions with regards to the media choices which we talked about earlier. Let's play the video. Is it just us, or have all smartphones become the same? It's time to snap out of it. Say hello to the new Moto Z. Hello, Moto. Get out of your six-inch screen and into a 70-inch projection. Get out of your headphones. Get loud with the JBL speaker box. Capture the whole moment with a 360 camera. Goodbye, saying, the new Moto Z with Moto. So um, for me, it comes down to, if you want to drive your brand, it comes down to distinctive branding. And distinctive branding, you always need to think of your brand devices. How much fame do they have? How unique are they? And those which, which are strong and those you need to be pushing as hard as possible, put them everywhere. Be very consistent in your spending on it. It is a little bit like uh, you are also not stopping on your, on your pension, uh, right? I mean, for, for the days uh, you, you keep, you keep investing in it. The other is, uh, it's really all about storytelling. Um, and that is, was my, my initial point, and that is because we are all humans. And uh, ultimately, guess, get as much reach as you can buy. And that is a, actually a phrase which uh, Byron Sharp is using in his book, um, this media case, because in Lenovo, we've been so focused on digital and social and engagement marketing, as I said. And here, it was really a case um, that that this alone is not going to make a dent if you want to be relaunching a brand. And I talked to a good friend of mine um, back in, in Paris who is in the advertising industry. And, and he said, well, have you read this book by, by Byron Sharp, How Brands Grow? And, and I read it, and it, it totally plays with it. Um, it. I mean, all of what he is preaching is, is ultimately uh, supporting what, what I've been showing here. So um, last, last thought, TV is not dead, um, far from. And uh, if you happen to work on an uh, old brand uh, with a long history, don't, uh, don't ever think that this might be a curse, but uh, embrace it fully, because uh, there is no doubt this is a big asset to have. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry again.